Hello, you're 12. <clears throat> Welcome to our lesson on situation ethics. Okay. So, situation ethics is a very modern method of uh, moral decision making. So, it's something that's developed over the last 50, 60, 70 years. And it is in complete opposition to natural law. And it is a Christian ethical theory, but it's very controversial, very controversial. So it's called situation ethics because Joseph Fletcher, who is the main proponent of situation ethics, states that instead of following rules, we should do the most loving thing relative to the situation. Okay, so instead of following rules, we should do the most loving thing relative to each unique situation. Okay, so let's begin. So let's think about this from our DCT unit. Where does Christianity get its morality from? Well, traditionally, Christians believe that morality comes from God. And perhaps it's revealed through the Bible or holy texts. But also we have natural law, which we looked at last week, which is Aquinas's idea that morality is revealed to all human beings through reason. So it's written on our hearts, as Paul uh, puts it. And we also have commands which come from um, the Bible as well. So there are various different ways that a Christian can make an ethical decision. Most Christian ethics traditionally has been deontological, which means it's been duty based. The rightness or wrongness of an action um, should always be adhered to. So a good example of uh, deontological ethics would be natural law, because natural law says things like it's always wrong to um, use a condom, even if it has a good consequence. It goes against your natural law. Another example would be the Ten Commandments. Okay, they're rules that you just have to follow. So this sort of exists across Christianity. So many Protestants obviously aren't Catholic, but many Protestants will also be deontological and believe in things such as killing is always wrong. It doesn't matter when it's done or why it's done. Ten Commandments says killing is wrong, it's bad. Uh, Catholic approaches, for example, Aquinas, the fifth of the five primary precepts, defend self for the innocent, it is always right to preserve human life, so killing is always wrong. So natural law is a deontological ethical theory. It provides rules that people have a duty to follow, and their rules are formulated by the Catholic Church through reason. So this is known as a legalistic approach to morality. And Joseph Fletcher writes in his book, Situation Ethics and New Morality, which was written in the 1960s, he writes that most Christian ethical theories have been legalistic. That means they focus on laws. Always do this, never do this. Thou shalt not do this. And Fletcher thinks that this is wrong and it's actually not very Christian. So Fletcher believes that all morality that's come from Christianity hasn't been Christian. And that's for lots of different reasons. But one of the reasons is because natural law relies on the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible. It relies on the idea of us being made in the image of God. And Protestant ethics relies on the Ten Commandments, which again is the Old Testament. Fletcher thinks traditional legalist ethics has ignored the most important thing about Christianity, which is the example of Jesus, the New Testament. Okay, so we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but situation ethics thinks, or Joseph Fletcher thinks, that situation ethics is the only moral theory that can really be said to be properly Christian because it follows Jesus and other ethical systems don't really listen to what Jesus actually did and what Jesus actually said. 
So Fletcher says there are some problems with legalistic approaches. And we can see these problems in our DCT unit. So for example, Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, wanted to kill Adolf Hitler, but the Bible says do not kill. So maybe the laws that come from legalistic ethics are too strict, they're too rigid. Dietrich Bonhoeffer is actually a bit of a hero for the situation ethicists, for Joseph Fletcher, because he's an example of someone who broke the laws. And situation ethics is all about breaking the law and instead doing what love commands. And love is the most important thing. So some problems are that legalistic ethics isn't flexible to unique situations. It means that you're loving laws more than you're loving people. Maybe it's not applicable to modern times and modern situations. So there's a problem with traditional Christian ethical systems. Now, the opposite of legalism is antinomianism. Antinomianism. And antinomianism is the idea that there's no law at all, there are no rules. And what this means is that the decision that you make is just completely dependent on the situation. So let's say someone wishes to have an abortion. The legalist might say no because the Bible says do not kill. And the antinomianist would say, well, we don't really know what the antinomianist would say. It depends completely on the situation. There's no principles, no laws at all. So Fletcher in his book talks about these two extremes. We have legalism and antinomianism. Antinomianism means against the law. It's a completely situational approach. That means you don't follow rules. Instead, you do what the situation uh, seems to suggest is the right thing. Each situation, each occasion is completely unique. There's no pattern to follow. However, there are big problems with antinomianism. And some of the problems are that it seems to be completely unprincipled. You can pretty much do anything. In fact, it, it seems completely lawless, like not ethical at all. You have no principles that you rely on. So that's legalism and antinomianism, and those are the two extremes that Joseph Fletcher talks about in his book, Situation Ethics, The New Morality. And Fletcher believes that both of these extremes are wrong, too much law and too little law. So here are some case studies for you to go through in your own time. So your ship goes down and you're lost at sea with two others and a life raft. You have no food. Without a supply of food, there's no hope of rescue before you starve to death. Two could survive by eating the third person. Otherwise, all three will die. What would you do? So this should help you understand legalism and antinomianism. So answer the following questions. So pause the video. What would the legalist do? Name a problem. What would the antinomianist do? And name a problem. OK, so what the legalist would do would refer to and apply the absolute law. So what does the law say? Do not kill. So you wouldn't eat the third person. And one problem with this decision is it's not flexible. Maybe in some situations you should break the law. Maybe in some situations it's OK to kill, for example, in war or if the woman is going to die because of her pregnancy or if you're all going to starve to death if you don't. So legalism seems quite inflexible. What would antinomianists do? We actually don't know. Whatever seems correct in the moment, because there's no rules and no laws. And the problem with this is there's no principles. It seems to not even be morality. It seems to just be random. So on one extreme, we have legalism, rules. On the other extreme, we have antinomianism, which is no rules. And Fletcher thinks both of these approaches are bad. What we need is something in the middle. 
Legalism is traditionally the form of Christian ethical decision making from the Pope, natural law tradition, down to Protestants who follow the Ten Commandments. So Fletcher wants to create a new, properly Christian ethical theory that's somewhere in the middle between these two. And this is what Fletcher says. Sometimes we need to set the rules aside and focus on the person in the situation. So F Fletcher believes that sometimes laws don't work. And sometimes we actually just need to focus on the exact situation. And that sounds quite antinomianist, but there is one rule that Fletcher says that you must follow, and that's love, agape, love thy neighbour as thyself. Okay, so situation ethics is sometimes called the love theory or love thy neighbour theory, and it's based on Jesus's commandments of love thy neighbour. And you're encouraged to do whatever produces the most loving outcome relative to that situation. So in between these extremes, Fletcher sets up his ethical theory called situation ethics. So Fletcher, a 20th century thinker, he was a professor who specialised in ethics at Cambridge and at Harvard. He began his career as a Christian, but he later renounced religion, so he actually stopped becoming a Christian. But for this reason, lots of people criticise his theory because they say, well, he's not even Christian. I don't think that's a very good criticism of the theory. Just because he personally wasn't a Christian doesn't mean the theory itself isn't Christian. He was suspicious of fixed rules. The Catholic Church has these fixed rules. For example, the Catholic Church says you should never wear a condom, even if you're in a country with HIV. And Fletcher thought that this was mad. It was mad to focus on rules so much. It was actually quite unchristian because Jesus didn't focus on rules. Jesus broke rules. So he was chairman of an American euthanasia group, so he was pro-euthanasia. Situation ethics is based on the idea that there are morals which are true to Christian beliefs. And he starts his book with the statement, there is no one ethical system that can claim to be Christian. So Fletcher doesn't think any ethical system so far has been Christian. So Fletcher says Christianity isn't about ethical systems. It's not about laws. It's not about rules. It's not about natural law. It's not about the Ten Commandments. What do you think he means by this? So what I think he means by this is that Jesus didn't follow rules. Jesus broke rules all the time. Jesus focused on people, not on law. But Fletcher also says it's not lawless either. So he's saying here Christianity isn't legalist, or shouldn't be legalist, but it's also not antinomianist. What do you think this means? Well, what Fletcher means is that there is still laws that Jesus follows, but it's only one law, the law of love. Love your neighbour. That's the only law that you should ever follow. So Fletcher believes that situation ethics is a Christian ethic based on the teachings of Jesus. And that's why it's actually Christian. It's based on the New Testament. That's what he believes. The Old Testament is about legalism and commandments. And it's also about people being immature. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, we just had natural law. And then we had revealed law revealed to us. And these were a strict set of commandments. And the reason people needed revealed law, according to Fletcher, was because uh, at the time, um, people were just immature. People were not wise enough to be able to do the most loving thing. And this can be seen in the uh, example of the people um, the Israelites leaving um, Egypt in the book of Exodus and worshipping a golden calf, going against God. So they needed 
divine commands. Humanity needed laws in the past. And Fletcher thinks that the New Testament is updating these laws. He thinks that the New Testament is for man come of age. That means for humans who are properly grown up and can actually now do what God commands. And what God commands is through the example of Jesus Christ loving our neighbour. Laws don't matter anymore after Jesus. All that matters is showing love. So this is where Jesus says, I've come to fulfill the law. Love thy neighbour. Set aside all other laws to show love for others. Some people criticise this and say, well, Jesus didn't actually say just that I've come to fulfill the law. He also said um, that you should follow the old testament laws as well so some people do criticize fletcher and say that his position is a bit too radical but this is what he believes christian ethics shouldn't be focused on law it should be focused on the example of jesus christ who shows love and love is not about following laws so this is jesus's commandment you should know this inside out from your gcse love thy neighbor as thyself and we say this so many times in the GCC that I think we forget what it actually means. What Jesus means by this is care completely for other people in the same way as you care for yourself. And Fletcher says this is the only rule you should ever follow. It's called a gape, a gape in Greek. And it means selfless, unconditional love. It's not romantic or sexual love. It means caring for your enemies, caring for everybody. OK, so you might want to pause the video and fill this in. A quick summary of what we've looked at so far. OK, so legalists believe that we should follow absolute moral laws. Anti-nominists believe we should follow no laws and make decisions according to the situation. Situationists, so situation ethics, dislikes legalism because there are too many laws. It puts the laws before people. Too fixed, too rigid, not what Jesus did. Situationists dislike antinomianism because there are no principles at all. So situation ethics is in the middle. It's partly legalist because there's one law that's followed, but partly antinomianist because it's based on the situation. So according to Fletcher, Jesus followed only one law, partly legalist, and thought all other laws could be broken uh, down into this law's interest. And this law is love. Situation ethics states that an ethical decision should be based on following the law of love. So, so far, so simple. So, here are a list of God's laws, for example, here are five of them. Follow the law, do not kill, do not lie, do not steal, do not work on the Sabbath. Very traditional legalist laws from the Old Testament. Now, <clears throat> it was a Sabbath day, according to the New Testament, and a man said, uh, please heal me, Jesus. Now, the law said don't work on the Sabbath. Did Jesus listen to that law? No. Jesus broke moral rules because he put people before the law. This is what uh, Joseph Fletcher takes his inspiration from, the actual stories of the Christian New Testament not the Jewish Old Testament, like the other systems, he thinks. So Joseph Fletcher takes his inspiration straight from the life of Jesus in the New Testament. I strongly suggest you watch this video. Okay, so you can copy and paste the link. The video shows how Jesus was killed for this. The Pharisees were the Jewish law um, makers and they believed that Jesus was committing blasphemy because he was breaking the laws. So the Jewish leaders were angry with Jesus because he broke the rules. 
that Jesus broke them because he put people first and showed love first. So for Fletcher, there is one moral law that is universal and can be applied depending on the situation, and this is love. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. This is the ultimate, this is a quote from Fletcher, the ultimate and only universal law. All other laws follow from this. So what Fletcher means by this is all other commandments are really about love follow the law do not kill do not lie do not steal do not work on the sabbath they're about love for example do not kill is a good commandment because in most cases do not kill produces love but in any situation where do not kill doesn't produce love for example euthanasia maybe killing is the most loving thing to do in that situation then you should break the rules and just go straight to love. Ignore everything else. So Fletcher thinks that all of the previous laws were about love, but they were for people who couldn't really work it out themselves. So now that we are man come of age, now that we are inspired by the example of the gospel, we can do what God really wants. And what God really wanted the whole time was simply to follow love. That's all that Jesus, who is God, incarnate ever taught and Fletcher says there must be love for an individual not love for a rule what do you think this means so what Fletcher I think is saying here is that traditional legalist ethics has focused on loving rules so the Catholic Church is like, well, it says you should never wear a condom, even when it hurts people to say that. And Fletcher thinks that traditional legalist ethics, they just love laws, even when applying the laws hurts people. So you can only ever show love to a person. So Fletcher says Christians need to set aside the rule book. Don't focus on rules at all. Just focus on love. OK, and this is halfway between antinomianism and legalism. All true Christians should do what Jesus did and tear up the rule book. So Fletcher says that situation ethics is partly antinomianist and partly legalist. It's partly legalist because there is still law, but it's one law, which is the law of love. And it's partly antinomianist because the actual action depends on the situation. The situation ethics means find the most loving solution in a situation. OK, so the rightness or wrongness of an act is based purely upon the outcome. How much love is shown to the greatest number of people? So situation ethics is consequentialist, just like utilitarianism. Any action is acceptable. Any action is acceptable. So long as it produces more love for more people. So Fletcher actually acknowledges this, that he borrows a lot from utilitarianism. And situation ethics is very similar to utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is about produce, um, well, act utilitarianism is about performing any action that produces the most amount of pleasure for the greatest number of people. Situation ethics is about performing any action as long as it produces the greatest amount of love for the greatest number of people. So actions in themselves aren't intrinsically good or bad. They're only instrumentally good or bad so far as they produce love as an outcome. And this has led to criticisms of situation ethics because, just like utilitarianism, arguably that means that anything is acceptable. Killing, raping, stealing. As long as in the situation it produces love for the greatest number, then that's acceptable. And lots of people have said that, well, Jesus, that's too far, that's too extreme. Jesus wouldn't have done those things. 
So situation ethics is consequentialist. Peleological. Decisions are made based on the outcome, whether the action serves agape love or not. So here's another example. Jailed, a mother who tied up her drug addict daughter to stop her buying heroin. A mother has been jailed after she bound and gagged her heroin addict, uh, addicted daughter to try to stop her buying drugs. Julia Saker, 50, is serving a 12-month sentence for false imprisonment after she restrained 19-year-old Tabitha, believing she was leaving the house to meet a dealer. Mrs Saker from Dover discovered her daughter was taking drugs in October last year. When she suspected Tabitha was about to buy more drugs, she tried to stop her going out by taping her legs together round her jeans. She was helped by the teenager's former boyfriend, Christopher Franklin. But the legalist would say that this is wrong, because it's wrong to kidnap someone. Kant would say it's wrong, for taking away her freedom. But the reason she did it was because of a good outcome. She wanted to do this in order to produce more love. That's what the situation ethicists would think. So the legalist would say that this is wrong. The antinomianist, we don't really know, because the antinomialist is based completely on the situation. The situationist, I think, would say that this was good because the rule, don't kidnap people, doesn't matter. In most situations, it produces love. Because kidnapping people isn't a loving thing to do. But in this situation, kidnapping her was the most loving thing to do. So the situationist would say that she did the right thing. Okay, so the natural law theorist would say it's wrong to turn off a life support machine. It's keeping someone alive because it's wrong to end a life. You need to defend self of the innocent. The legalist would say this then. Ten Commandments are against this, and natural law is against this. The situationist would say we need to consider the situation and follow the law of love. Whatever produces love, switching off the machine, not switching off the machine, doesn't matter. Work out what produces love, and then that's what you do. What's the most loving thing to do? And the antinomianist would say it depends entirely on the situation. Okay, so it depends entirely on the situation, is antinomialist. Jesus can't heal the man, he has to follow the law, that's legalist. Jesus needs to set aside this rule and instead follow the rule of love, that's situationist. Okay, so an opening paragraph, a quick summary of what we've looked at so far. Situation ethics is a normative ethical theory, which means it tells us what we ought to do. It is also a teleological or consequentialist theory because it is focused on the consequences of an action rather than the action itself. According to situation ethics, an action is only considered good if it serves the rule of love. Joseph Fletcher was reacting against legalistic ethical theories which are built upon set rules such as natural law used by the Catholic Church. He said that this is an issue because it puts the law before the people. The other extreme is to take an anti-nominalist approach where the moral decision is based entirely on the situation. This is also problematic because it results in chaos and disorder. Fletcher's approach is in between the two because um, it follows the ruling norm, the law, the rule of love, but applied relative to the situation. This approach is inspired by the ethic of Jesus of Nazareth, who Fletcher believes set aside Jewish law to promote agape love. Agape is a Christian concept which means selfless, universal and unconditional love. This is based upon Jesus' teaching of love thy neighbour as thyself. Okay, so let's go back to Kant's example. Let's imagine there's an axe man at your door and he's looking for your friend, Kant says, but let's say your sister. According to Kant, we cannot lie. 
because lying to the X-Man takes away his reason and his freedom, it's not universalizable, it's treating him as a means to an end. According to natural law, well, it depends on double effects, actually, but probably we can't lie as well. So the legalist would have to say where the uh, friend was. The anti-nominalist, we don't really know what they do. The situationist would lie. Even though the Bible says do not lie, obviously the right thing to do in this situation is to break the rules because you're showing the most love to your friend. Train example. Should we let it kill five people or change the uh, course of the track to kill one? Similar to the fat man example. The legalist would say you do not kill, so you have to let the train kill the five people. The anti-nominist, we don't know what they'd do. The situationist would say, in this situation, it's okay to kill because you're showing more love to more people. So this woman is a hero for Fletcher. Let's imagine this. Let's imagine she said, a starving child asked me to steal some bread for him to take back to his starving family. I knew stealing was wrong because it said so in the Bible. However, I decided that sometimes you have to forget your principles and do the right thing. Pause the video and think to yourself, why is this woman a hero for Fletcher? Okay, well, the answer is because she did what love demanded in that situation, even if she had to set aside the rules and break the rules. So, love thy neighbour. Let's imagine if everybody followed this law and there were no other laws. There were no laws like don't steal, don't kill. There was just love your neighbour. And everybody had to follow that rule. Do you think crime would be higher or lower? Well, Fletcher's thought is that crime would be lower right because it's not very loving to commit crime 99 percent of the time maybe in small situations it's loving to commit crime like when your family are starving and you need to steal something but i think fletcher's point is that this is the only law that we need we don't need any other laws you might disagree and say that this is unrealistic and people might um use this to their advantage and say that some things are loving when they're actually not or you might say that people aren't intelligent enough to just follow one rule and work out the right thing to do but fletcher believes that we are so fletcher's theory is based on one principle love and he believed that justice people getting what they deserve is love in action. All actions carried out in the name of love are good intrinsically, and the end always justifies the means. So it is teleological or consequentialist. If we always act according to love, all other laws will fall into place. This means most of the time you'll be following the Ten Commandments because the Ten Commandments are the most loving thing to do. For example, in most situations, do not kill is the most loving thing to do. The difference is you're not killing, not because the law has told you to, but because love tells you not to in that situation. And as soon as killing actually produces more love, for example, maybe in cases of euthanasia, then it's acceptable. So you don't need any other laws. As long as you have love thy neighbour, you'll always do the right thing. OK. So let's imagine there's a sign that says keep off the grass. That's a law. And then you see someone who is beating someone up on the grass. Now, most people would say, of course you would break the law. And this is what situation ethics is talking about. The legalist might say, no, sorry, but you can't go on the grass. The situation ethics is about doing the right thing despite laws. 
let's imagine that there was somebody who was about to kill your family. The legalist would say, you can't kill this man. But the situationist would say, you should be allowed to kill in this situation. Because in this situation, it's the most loving thing to do to protect your family. So there's a real flexibility at the heart of situation ethics. A real flexibility that's not really there with Kantian ethics and natural law and other deontological theories. Okay, let's imagine your family are starving. The legalist would say, you can't steal bread. The situationist would say, in this situation, the most loving thing to do would be to break the law, which is don't steal. And Jesus did this constantly. You know, Jesus working on the Sabbath day, for example, healing the paralyzed man. Okay. So if following the law doesn't make an action right, what does is love. Why does the action change? Because situations are unique, they're different. There can't be the same laws for every situation. So in a situation where you could kill an innocent person, obviously it's not loving to kill. So you won't do it. But you won't do it, according to Fletcher, because the rule says don't kill but because it's not loving to kill in this situation. Legalists are lovers of law, not lovers of people. We've already looked at this. Situationists are lovers of people, not lovers of law. So maybe think about that to yourself and think, well, what exactly does that mean? Okay, so please steal food to feed me. The legalist might say no. Can't break moral laws. Fletcher would say, the legalist cares more about rules than Jesus. Jesus would have broken the rules. Christianity cannot be contained within a legalist ethical system, says Fletcher, because the most loving outcome changes in each situation. So you can't have the same set of rules for all of life. In some situations, killing is loving. In some situations, killing is not loving. It depends on the situation. So actions are only right or wrong according to one absolute rule. Whatever is the most loving thing in that situation is the correct thing. Okay, similarly, this man might be a hero for Fletcher. So pause this and read through this and think about this yourself. Okay, so Christian ethics are found within traditional laws, rules about right or wrong. Fletcher thinks that this is too rigid. The only law that matters is love your neighbour as yourself. So situation ethics is the application of the absolute law of love to each unique situation. Whatever creates the most loving outcome is the right action. The situationist follows a moral law or violates it according to love's needs. So we've looked at the beginnings of the theory. Now we need to think about well, what actually is love then? What is love for a Christian? It's not Valentine's Day and kisses and cuddles. Love for a Christian is what Jesus showed his enemies. Complete care and consideration. You don't have to like the person. Care for all of creation. God's love. Agape love. So Fletcher talks about four forms of love. We have the same word for love in English, for all of these different types. But in Greece, or in ancient Greek, sorry, there were different types of words. So there are three kinds of love that Fletcher believes isn't Christian. The first one is called philos, and this is friendship. And this is the love that you show to friends. And the reason an ethical theory can't be based on philos is because of the scope. The scope of philos is just to some people. You can't say, just love your friends. That's not what Jesus did. 
The next form is storge, which is family love. Love between children and parents and relatives. And this isn't going to be good enough for an ethical theory because you can't just say love your family because that's not going to apply to all humans equally. The next is eros, erotic love, romantic love, lust, passion. And again, this isn't going to work because the scope is small. You only really love one other person. Instead, we have agape. Now, this is Christian love, selfless love, love where you expect nothing back. In these forms of love, you expect something back, don't you? You only do it because you have feelings or because you're related or because you get on with the person. But agape is not like that. It's love for enemies, for all of creation without prejudice. Okay, so Paul's letter to the Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind, love is not boastful or arrogant or rude, love never ends. Non-judgmental love. So Fletcher focuses on agape. And another good example is from the New Testament, the Good Samaritan. Somebody asks Jesus, well, who is my neighbour? Jesus says the only way to get into heaven is to love God and love your neighbour. And the story of the Good Samaritan suggests that your neighbour is all people. Remember? The man is mugged on the road and he's Jewish and two Jewish priests walk away. They don't help him. And that's because they don't want to break the law. The law says don't touch a dead body. The person who helps is a Samaritan. And Samaritans were enemies of the Israelites, the Jews. But that didn't matter. Similarly, when Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus forgave his enemies. That was agape love. It wasn't romantic. It wasn't friendship. It wasn't family. It was love for all people, even if they're killing you. Okay, so agape love is the best type of love. It's the most democratic form of love because it extends to all people, whether you know them or not. And this is the kind of love that Jesus shows. Okay, so this is storge, not good enough. This is philos, not good enough. Street pastors, you'll have looked in your GCSE, they don't know the person, they're not friends with the person. This is agape or Christian love. This is eros, not good enough. This is eros, not good enough. Mother Teresa, a Christian saint, helping people she didn't know, that's agape, that's Christian love. Loving your parents, not good enough, storage love. But these forms of love are still important, so don't get me wrong, but they're not going to be what the ethical system is based on. Okay, philos, not good enough. Agape then is doing the best for everyone and anyone. Not, I'm going to do what's best for my brother. Not, I'm going to do what's best for my friend. And not what I'm going to do best for my boyfriend. These are the wrong kinds of love. Agape is about everybody. Okay, so agape love is the only kind of love that an ethical system should be based upon because it's democratic, it's fair, and importantly, it's Christian. Okay, so what form of uh, ethics is this? It depends on the situation and what best serves love. Well, that is situation ethics. Now, Fletcher comes up with six propositions. So there are a list of six things that you need to go through in order to work out what is the most loving thing to do relative to each situation. And we're going to look at those in a second. Before we do that, I'd like us to consider this question. Is situation ethics relative or absolute? Just pause the video. And think about that to yourself.
Yeah, well, the answer is it's actually a bit of both. Why is that? Well, what you do, the action, is relative to the situation. But there is still an absolute good, which is love. So love is absolute in every situation. But what produces love is relative. So there are five people on the train track relative to that situation. Pushing off the fat man is the right thing to do. But if there were no people on the track relative to that situation, pushing off the fat man is the wrong thing to do. So a situation if it's consequentialist or deontological, it is consequentialist. So Fletcher calls this the relative absolutes. There's an absolute law, which is love. However, the action that best produces love is relative. OK, it's consequentialist because the only thing that is of importance is the consequence of love. Any action is acceptable if it produces more love. So here's another example of an opening paragraph. Fletcher's situation ethics was made to fulfill the law of love. Fletcher tells us the only kind of love we should concern ourselves with is agape love, which is universal love for all mankind, as demonstrated by Jesus in the New Testament. Situation ethics is a consequentialist ethical theory, which means the action is justified by the outcome. The outcome that must be achieved is universal love for all people. Any action is acceptable relative to how much is, uh, love is produced according to the situation. So, for example, if we could cure someone's suffering by switching off a life support machine, then Fletcher would tell us the most loving action would be to create, oh, sorry, apologies for this, it shouldn't say create the sibling, um, switch off the life support machine because it produces the most amount of love for the most uh, greatest number of people, even if it breaks moral rules. OK, so the six fundamental principles. We're going to look at this in the next video because I'm going to split this into two halves because I do want to keep each video under an hour. So what we've looked at then is situation ethics, Joseph Fletcher. We've looked at the problems of legalism and antinomianism. We've looked at Fletcher's middle ground, which is situation ethics. We've looked at the different kinds of love and we've begun to look at how Fletcher bases his theory on the example of Jesus Christ. Next lesson, we'll look at how the theory is applied in a bit more depth. And we'll also obviously look at some criticisms and an essay as well. OK, thank you very much, Year 12.